Hey there, it's Tracy Wilson. And if you're joining me live today, it's because you want to start living a life unlocked. So today you've joined me on the Unlocked Show, where people from all over the world will come to learn how to unlock their inner genius, their true potential to create a thriving business, family and life. So if that's you, hang around because the next 20 or 30 minutes that I spend with you today is going to give you a bit of an insight into how this is all going to unfold over the coming weeks and months and years that I spend with you here on the uh, MetaDime digital channel. I'm very, very privileged and lucky to be here today, and I'm um, grateful to the team at Metadime for allowing me to share my, I suppose, my inner genius with everybody and help you guys uh, to, to live this life of being unlocked as far as your business, your life, and also your family is concerned. Um, so some of the things I'm going to share with you today, I'm going to give you a bit of a backstory. I'm also going to tell you, um, you know, why you should tune in and actually listen to these shows, what I'm going to be sharing with you, and how I can help you to uh, live a better life, live a life that's unlocked, and enable you to move forward in a way that maybe you haven't done before. So I don't possess to have all of the answers to everything. Nobody does. Uh, but what I will do is provide you with some tips, tools, resources, and obviously my knowledge and skill that I've sort of picked up over a number of years, 20 or 30 years being uh, in my adulthood. And uh, I'm going to unlock all of my knowledge and know-how. And you'll be able to take some of little tidbits of that and apply them to your own life. So for those of you who know me, thank you very much for joining. Um, as you know, as the show uh, indicates, my name is Tracy Wilson. For those of you who don't know me, let me tell you a little bit about my backstory and how this show has even uh, come about to be on this channel today. So I'm going to take you back. I'm going to take you back, um, you know, a number of years now. And I want you to imagine uh, that you are in my shoes. So I'm going to put you in my shoes and I'm going to give you a little bit of a walk in uh, my shoes over a, over a period of time. And I'm going to try and do this in a really condensed space of time, which is like the next 20 minutes. So I'm going to be, going to be giving you like 20 years worth of stuff in a 20-minute uh, period. So I grew up in a small town in New Zealand. So I currently live on the Gold Coast in Australia and uh, a number of things have enabled me to uh, to move my family and my life here to Australia and I absolutely love it. But I grew up in a very small town uh, called Levin in the lower uh, North Island of New Zealand and um, they're very, very close-knit community and I'm lucky uh, that today I even have some friends that I grew up with that we are still very, very good friends today and I believe that some of them are even on the show with me today, which I'm super grateful for. So I grew up there in a small uh, close-knit community. And when I was about, um, I, I went to obviously primary school and then I went off to intermediate, which is what we call, and I think from the American terms, I think you guys might call that middle school. Um, during middle school is where I met uh, my my now husband. Um, so we've been together a long, 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 long time. Um, so some of the things that I'm going to be sharing with you are the things that I'm super passionate about. So business, family, and life in general. So I'm going to be sharing this stuff with you because these are the things that not only are passionate to me, um, but that I have been, you know, like everybody else, have been working on to try and get balance in my life um, for, for a long, long time. And I'm hoping that the, some of the things that I'll share with, uh, with you will resonate with you and you'll be able to apply uh, some things to your life. Uh, particularly after this COVID situation, to you know, to look at things a little bit differently. So, <clears throat> very unusual in that uh, in that sense that you know, met the love of my life at the age of thirteen. We're still happily married today. Um, so, got lots of things to share about how we've um, how we've managed to do that. Um, so, at the age of fifteen. I find myself sitting at the end of a dinner table having to explain to my father that I was going to be making him a grandfather. Um, and you can only imagine what that, um, you know, what that situation is like. You know, you all get called to a, to a family group conference to have this conversation about, you know, what are you going to do with your life? How are you going to manage? Um, what are the neighbours going to say? Righty, righty, righty. You can imagine all of the things that were going through, um, probably more so my parents' head than my own, because at that time, you know, being very young, you don't really think about a lot of stuff, and uh, maybe you're also a little bit selfish at that time. So for me, sitting at that end of at the end of that table, um, grateful that I had my my now husband with me at the time uh, to to share that. Um, 
you know, that secret that we had been keeping for a number of months with my parents and uh, coming together to try and work out as a family, what the heck are we going to do? What are we going to do? And, um, um, you know, you can think about all the different options that um, are currently available, adoption, abortion, so on and so forth. Um, and me at, at the age of 15 said, do you know what? I can do this. I'll be out, Dad. I will be okay. Um, I didn't know what that was going to look like. I didn't even know if I would if I would really be okay or what that even really meant. Um, but I knew that in that moment, it, everything would be okay. Everything would work itself out. Um, so, <clears throat> moving forward, a number of a couple of years. You know, I'm 16 at this time. I've got my first baby. Going back to school, trying to better myself from a from an educational point of view because you you um, you can also understand that you've got the the stereotypical things that come with that young teenage mum going to be on a benefit, so on and so forth, close knit community, people talking, um, the whole kit and caboodle. But at that time, you have a choice to make, right? So you have a choice as to whether or not you live to the expectations of others, or you move down the pathway that everybody else thinks that is likely to happen to you, um, or you can choose a completely different path altogether, which is what I did. I sort of looked at that and went, huh, you know what, I don't want that. Um, that's not a life uh, that I'm, you know, that, that I have in my head or paved out for me. I want to choose a completely different direction. Um, you know, a couple of years later, uh, two more children, um, you know, it, it, to, to make our family of, of five. And I had all three of my children by the time I was 21. So you can imagine back then, well, whilst all my friends are out having fun, going to parties, all those sorts of things, that certainly wasn't the life that I had back then. I was changing nappies, making bottles, cleaning houses, doing and, and going to school and trying to um, trying to get ahead, as was my my now husband uh, John at that time. So this just paints you a little bit of a picture about kind of the story that I've got and where I've come from. So certainly haven't come, um, you know, to where I am today with everything already paved out. I've you know worked hard um, and have gone through some pretty. Um, I'm going to say challenging times to enable me to navigate my way and make um, and make some different choices that maybe are you know not always possible for everybody. So anyhow, um, by the time I was 21, I was lucky enough. Um, actually, whilst I was uh, 17, I, I picked up a. Um, I was asked to do a work experience at a bank, and uh, they asked me, you know, would you like to go and do um, some work experience? And I said, yeah, absolutely, I'll go and do that. Um, I was already working, um, at, you know, a nighttime job at a restaurant, um, you know. Uh, training all of the the new staff that came on board, and I was only you know I was the youngest one in that um, in that restaurant at the time. Anyway, I got an opportunity to to go and do a work experience, which put me right in the middle of a um, a large organisation, which was a banking organisation um, back then when I was you know I was only seventeen, and I went um, to this work experience, and at the time they were flat out busy, super understaffed, um, queues out the door, and of course I. I turn up this young person who needed a bit of training and everybody else was busy. So I, again, I had two options at that time was to sit back and wait for people to give you direction or you can step up, kind of look what the what your your neighbouring, um, you know, uh, staff member is doing, and just follow suit. So that's what I decided to do. I would just jump up on the counter and I would just watch what the person next to me did, um, serve the customers that were in front of me, and just do what I had to do to help the team out at that time. That um, that there. Hi, hi everybody. I can see lots of people are actually joining in. So I'm just looking at the comments on the side. So thanks very much. Um, and I'll get to a lot of those in a moment. But, you know, the choice that you have at that time is to sit back and wait for somebody else to tell you to do something, or you can just step up and get on with it and, you know, make um, make the best of, it, of, it, of the situation and do what's intuitively um, natural to you, which to me at that time was just to follow what, what the other person was doing. So fast forward a bit of time, um, by the time I was 21, I then decided that, hey, I've been in this organisation for long enough now, um, you know, all of two years, I think it was, and, uh, you know, I didn't want to be the person who was on the teller, I wanted to be the bank manager. Um, so, you know, what did I do? I put my hand up and said, hey, I'll do some relief uh, management roles in these positions, and, and I managed to get those, and I 
I worked out some things that I could do that would get me noticed and make some real changes to that particular organization at the time. And lucky for me, the things that I did, did make a difference and it did get me noticed, which meant that I was then seen as somebody who would um, use their initiative and uh, you know was willing to do things that were a little bit outside of the box. And I've kind of taken that uh, premise with me through everything that I do in life. I don't, you know, try not to think internally, we think um, externally and outside of the box. So I'm telling you these stories so that I'm hoping that some of this is going to resonate with you, that um, you'll see that some of the things I'm going to share with you will be a little bit unorthodox. I don't always do things the way that people um, think we should. I often do things um, a little bit backwards, but it seems to work. And I want you guys to take away from that, um, that you don't have to do things the way that people prescribe them or the way that you think they should. You can certainly move through uh, life and doing things the way that sit right with you so that you have nice balance across you know, your, your life and your family. So that gave me a huge opportunity uh, to become a, one of the youngest bank managers at the time, uh, particularly being a female uh, in New Zealand. And that job or that career has taken me all over New Zealand and then brought me to Australia, where I then uh, was promoted into various different roles, managing large, um, you know, large regions of people. I think at one point I had over 145 people under uh, my direction. So, you know, I've got experience across that as well as um, you know, working in my own business. So <clears throat> that corporate career, as much as at the time it really fulfilled me and I absolutely loved it, but I think now looking back, I actually um, trained myself to love it. I loved it because I thought I had to love it. When I actually look back and I look back to the end of my career um, in the banking industry, I was actually really unhappy. Um, and it, it came to a point where I didn't want to go to work. I wasn't showing up the way that I needed to for my family. I wasn't being, um, you know, bringing the whole of me to the table because back then, and this might, um, this may be something that you've heard previously, is that your um, in the corporate world, I was very much taught to leave your baggage at the door. And I even can remember myself saying that to, to other staff. Hey, guys, in a team meeting, we're here. You know, this is what we do. It's game on. Um, we leave all of our baggage at the door. Um, and that is so, so um you know, wrong on so many levels. And the reason being is that we are, you know, we are the whole of us and we want to be able to show up to whatever it is that we're doing with everything we've got. Yes, we all have baggage. Yes, we all have challenges. And often when we can share those challenges, it will help to inspire and motivate somebody else who's going through a similar situation to be able to make, um, you know, to be able to navigate and find their way, um, you know, through life. So, I'm, you know, I wanted to share that with you because that gives you a bit of a backstory. Um, it also tells you that at that time, obviously something uh, big went down where I made a massive change. And that massive change was stepping out of a 20 year, really successful corporate career into this world of entrepreneurship. Um, and that And, um, and I knew that that day would come, but I had to make a decision to make that happen. So about seven years ago, um, I, um, part of my role was to be the ambassador for women's market. So I was the champion for women in business within Queensland, for a part of Queensland, um, Australia. And through that, my role was to put on various different events for, uh, for women
Here we go. Hey, guys, this, that's the reality of life, isn't it? Internet kind of decides to play when it wants to play. So um, I was sharing with you that I had this chance encounter with an ex-Olympian, and uh, she asked me if I could put on a various, different, uh, various events for her to give her an opportunity to speak in front of um, a bunch of small business owners. So I did that and uh, found that I had the skill of being able to bring a whole lot of people together. And unbeknownst to me, that uh, that little exercise that she did or she had me, um, me run for her actually launched her business from nothing to six figures in the space of about two weeks. So I quickly learned that um, that this world of entrepreneurship was really, really um, interesting to me. And at that time, my staff were saying to me, hey, Trace, you you could do that. You could get up on a stage and you could be talking like that. And that planted a seed for me. And I thought, you know what? Yes, I could. And I would absolutely love to do that. So that, from that moment onwards, I started looking for opportunities for me to take a step outside of the comforts of the corporate world. And, uh, you know, when we're in corporate environments, and I'm going to talk, this is kind of like prior um, COVID-19 or prior coronavirus, right? We we all thought that in when you're in a corporate job or you're in government, that we are all safe. Um, the thing is, that now we've had this thing called coronavirus kind of thrown at us um, at, a, at a time where we weren't expecting it. Nobody saw this really coming. We've had some people that preempted it um, a number of years ago, but it sort of hit us out of the blue. And because of that, there will be people now listening to me today who are have potentially lost their jobs. And the thing that... Um, that we thought was very secure previously is no longer it was no longer a really secure place. So one of the things that we need to make sure that we do is that we are in control of our own destiny. We unlock all of our inner genius and we start to take control of that so that we can uh, we can create the future for ourselves. And when we do that for ourselves, we'll see that you know, ripple effect um, throughout the entire world. So that's the purpose of why I'm wanting to do this show. Um, and that's that um, instance of having the uh, the Olympian um, work with me at that time opened the floodgate. It, it gave me an opportunity to see what else was possible, what else was available to me. And then I had to make the choice to actually make the cut the ties and take the step and start my own thing with no real idea about you know what it was going to look like, how I was going to do it. All I knew is that this was the right thing to do. Um, so I started a business called Business Beyond Five, which is here on the Gold Coast. And I've been sharing with our business owners and, um, and people how to start their own businesses, writing business plans, helping people navigate, you know, some really tricky situations and been sharing a lot of my knowledge on a one-on-one -on -one basis. And I got to a point where I'm now tapped out from a one-on-one -on -one point of view because people ringing, you know, ringing and trying uh, and speaking with me on a daily basis, you can only help so many people. So with a show like this, my goal is to be able to unlock all of that I know. I'm going to share with you like an open book, the information that I have that has helped me get to the place that I am today where I feel really comfortable comfortable about my life, my business, my, my family, and I want to be able to share that with you so that you can experience the same. So I'm just going to, um, I'm going to share some stuff. So I'm just going to look on, on my um I've got some comments on here, so I'm just going to have a look and see if I can pull some of them up. Let's see if I can get me. Here we go. Look at that. So Donnie's saying that, uh, yes, we're in challenging times and what a better time to grow and no better time to start a new show unlock. Thanks very much, Donnie. Um, I would totally agree with that, that this is the right time for, for something like this to be shared. Um, I feel like there is um, a whole lot of people that, you know, in this one thing that I think that the COVID virus has, um, has enabled us to do is to stop for a moment. And if anything else, it's like brought people back to to almost a center going, 
you know, what is really important to me. Um, I saw a I saw a post the other day, and I, I, I know I'm kind of going off on a tangent here, but these are just things that are coming to me that I want to share. I saw something the other day, and it was a post, and it had a picture of a Kardashian and a picture of a nurse. Um, and it, it really um, did hit me. And, what, and one of the things it said on the nurse, it said, you know, um, priceless. And then not so good on the Kardashian. It said, you know, uh, pointless. And I'm not, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm just all I'm trying. The point I'm trying to make with this is that it's a time for us to really look at the things that we do, and are they really making a difference? Can we do stuff that really helps other people to make that makes a difference in their life, makes a difference to their family, makes a difference to their business, the environment, and the world in general? So I, I really feel like um, through this coronavirus, that it's really given me the opportunity to stop to think about what's super important. Um, think about my family and the things that I need to do or that I want to do that maybe have even had on that I have had on a to-do list um, that I hadn't been doing and this show is actually one of them this is the thing that I've been wanting to do for a long long time and uh, and I just had you know for whatever reason just didn't get round to it um, and I'm going to share with you it was probably through um, felt like fear of judgment so which brings me to uh, one of the things that I wanted to talk about today, which is absolutely that. Before I got on the show, I went and had a look on Facebook and I'm in a number of different groups. And for some reason, this particular uh, post um, stood out to me and it was somebody in another group saying, do you feel like um, you are being held back because you have fear of judgment? Um, is anybody else feeling this way? And it was like, oh my God, the number of people that were actually posting and they're saying, yes, 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 I feel like that. So the one thing that I want to share with you today that I'm hoping that you will take away is that everybody, no matter who you are, fears judgment in some way, shape or form. And that fear of judgment often holds us back from doing the things that we really, really want to do. And I can tell you right now, and the way that I can test this is that right now, you are watching this. We are human judging machines. That is what we are designed to do. We are designed to judge stuff, but we are designed to judge things because it's we are determining whether or not it is a fight or flight mechanism that we need to um, that we need to put into play. I'm judging this to determine is it going to hurt me, and if it's not going to hurt me, then I can you know I can hang around. So that is our primary purpose of obviously having that um, having that in our lives. And and the thing is that that. Um, fear of judgment, then we apply it to ourselves and we think, oh, I don't want to be judged by other people. When in fact, every single person judges. Right now, you will be judging me. You're judging how good the show is. You're judging what I'm saying. You're judging how I'm speaking. The funny, you know, Aussie Kiwi woman who's got a strange accent. You're judging all of that. The way that I look, the way that my background is, where does she live? So what I'm, what the point that I want to make today is that as you are watching this, just realize that judgment is just a part of what we do as humans. And if you allow that to paralyze you, then um, clearly we're often doing ourselves and the people that want to hear from us a massive um, injustice because we're allowing, we're very, very focused on ourselves and not focused on, uh, on you know, the people that we are here to serve. So that's what I wanted to say about um, that whole judgment piece. I watched a, um, I was in another group and somebody who was talking to, to us at the time about judgment or fear of judgment and that judgment holding you back and paralyzing you from doing the things that you really want to do. He put up this, um, this video of Elvis and this video of Elvis had Elvis singing um, Unchained Melody. And it was like an amazing, um, it, was a, it was a great rendition of it, Ex extremely raw, extremely real. It was at sort of the end of, uh, of Elvis's career where he was sort of wavering a little bit. Um, drugs and alcohol had sort of come into his life and he wasn't looking at his best. And this person asked us to watch this video and we were to watch the video and we were to, you know, write in the comments what we saw. Um, and everybody in the group, 300 odd people started 
writing what they saw. And a lot of people were writing what they saw in terms of, hey, it was a really great rendition. Even the things that I've just said to you are my judgments of how he performed that day. So, you know, he was um, under the weather. He looked like he was on um, some form of drug. He was... Um, you know, he, he was looking for other people's, um, you know, confirmation that he was doing the right thing. He sounded great, so on and so forth. But the point that this person was trying to make was that even though Elvis being a, like, huge icon, being dead for, God knows, 40, 50 years, even to this day after his death, he is still being judged. So I want you to take away from that that, it is, you know, judgment. You just got to, you just got to realize that people are doing that all the time, that you are doing it yourself and that you just need to get yourself out there and do what you do to make a difference. So I want you to think, so the takeaways from today are, you know, the fear of judgment is always there. What are you going to do about it? So I'm just challenging you to think about what you are going to do. Are you going to allow fear of judgment to hold you back from sharing your greatness? Or will you step up and uh, share your greatness with the world and make a real difference? I'm just going to put this up. And are you going to, you know, are you going to make the, the time, the time for this is now? Um, you've got a whole lot of people, you know, going back to the, the situation that we're in right now in terms of being in this COVID situation, completely unprecedented. Um, we, we haven't had this before in our, in most of our lifetimes who are here today. So we've got a lot of people sitting at home waiting to hear from us. And what I want you to do is I want you to go away from today's uh, session and I want you to think about what greatness can you have you got to share with the world. And if you're thinking right now, I don't have any, I'm going to call BS on that because uh, that is totally not true. You will have something. And I want you to look around yourself um, since you've been at home in this sort of lockdown or, or restrictive um, in kind of environment that we've been living in, what things have you done? How have you adapted your life? What have you done that has made a difference to your business, your life or your family? Because if you've done some of those things, then most likely you've got stuff that you can share with the world and share with them how you've done it. Because there's likely somebody at home waiting to hear from you, trying to figure out how to do what you've just done. So I'm just going to read this. Um, Donald Gifford saying, yes, it's time to be authentic and share discerning, honest information to empower others to transform in these difficult times um, from this point on. Thank you, Donna. You're a natural for this, Tracy, and I'm and doing an amazing job, by the way. Thank you. And you love my accent. accent. Thanks very much, Donna. I, I really, truly believe that that is the case, that uh, we are in a, a time of change and that we can uh, embrace this change and you know, make a difference uh, where you can right now, whether it be to a neighbor, to a friend, reaching out to somebody and thinking about your, you know, for those of you that are here that are, that are in business, what can you do to pivot your business to make a difference to somebody else? If you're here, you don't have a business, but it's just family life. How do you, um, how can you bring your family closer together? I'm going to give you a little tip there. Um, we can use technology to do that in a really neat way. And I'll share some of the stuff over uh, the coming weeks about how we've done that with our family. And then also with your life, you know, are you prepared to live a life where you are locking things away, where you feel like, you know, I want more, I know I can do more, I want to be more, um, but for whatever reason, you just haven't been able to do that. For a lot of you, there's probably something sitting in, you know, in your gut or in your heart that says, man I want to give more I want to do more I want to be more if that is the case that is exactly why you need to tune into this show every Tuesday and every Thursday 10 a.m Brisbane time or 8 p.m uh, Eastern Standard Time in America because I'm going to be sharing and unlocking my secrets the things that I've done the things that I've learned that have enabled me to live a life where I'm just I'm just happy I'm happy with where I'm at, what I'm doing, and how I do it. Um, and I want everyone else to, to feel the same way. We are no longer in a situation where um, things, I'm going to say things, materialistic things, are not the key to happiness. Materialistic things are not the key to happiness. Because if they were, then, you know, everybody would still be really happy the way that they are right now. All those people, all those 
ones that have got, um, you know, I'm seeing a lot of celebrities online that have got what you would consider everything. They've got the flash houses, the flash cars, so on and so forth. But they're online saying that they're really unhappy, cooped up, locked up in their own homes. So this is a time for us to be happy in ourselves, happy with your family, happy in your business. Um, and we're going to share and unlock some tools, resources and strategies to be able to do that. So I'm so glad that you guys have joined me on uh, on the show today. Today was just really about me jumping on, you getting to understand, you know, who I am, where I'm coming from. I'm always going to show up here and just be me. Sometimes there'll be things that I'll have a, a show plan mapped out, but in other cases, there'll be different things that will just pop into my brain that I just want to share um, with a view that, you know, you take something, even if it's something little, something, one thing that I've said that can make a difference to your life um, and that what we need in the world right now is people who actually care and love one another that will make a difference. It truly, truly will. So that being said, I am like, bang on 30 minutes um so i'm going to dial out for today but i would love to see you guys all back here next tuesday so a bit of a change in time so i'll be back uh tuesdays and thursdays like i said 10 a.m brisbane time uh 8 p.m in uh, eastern standard time in america 12 lunchtime in new zealand so i'm looking forward to seeing you guys here and then over the over the uh coming weeks and months i'll also have some guest speakers um, and we'll do some pretty cool stuff so hang around if you want to live a life that is unlocked from a business point of view your life or your family thanks so much for joining me i'm tracy wilson and i look forward to seeing you guys next week here back on the unlock show see ya Thank <laughs> you.